So now let's take a look at our second example for radiative and convective heat transport. And this actually has some practical meanings. Because uh, if you are an orange farmer in uh, late fall, when temperature starts to drop overnight, uh, that you don't want your orange to get frozen on the tray, that definitely will lead to significant economic loss. So this is a certainly a hypothetical situation, but uh, uh, it will be a good example for us to evaluate what happens there. So suppose that your orange, only one third of the surface is facing the sky that is going to be losing heat due to radiation. Because the other two thirds is buried inside the leaves. They, they're at roughly the same temperature. So that's not going to cause any heat loss. So because only one third of the area is losing heat due to radiation, we can calculate the uh, radiative heat loss coming off the orange at, uh, at a uh, late uh, fall night when the sky temperature, which is the ambient temperature, becomes very, you know, becomes low. Right? So if we have a surface temperature when freezing starts to occur at minus one degree Celsius, the 272K, then if the sky temperature drops, and this is what happens during uh, late fall, early winter, and the sky temperature, let's say, is 230K, then your orange is going to lose heat due to radiation. And if the ambient air is not that cold, the air, if the air temperature is above the freezing temperature, in this case is minus one degree Celsius, then ambient air is going to bring heat to the orange. So the convective heat transport in this case will be bringing heat to the orange. And if these two equals to each other, that will reach a, a steady state or equilibrium. And that's, we can calculate at which air temperature, then these two will equal each other. So the, the temperature of the orange will not keep dropping, right? but it's still at minus one degree Celsius, which is freezing point. And uh, if we assume that the conductive heat transport coefficient is three watts per square meter per degree Celsius, then you solve these, so you equal QC to QR, because we know all the others. We know the uh, air temperature, or we, we know the surface temperature needs to be 272K. We know the conductive heat transport coefficient. We know the surface area of the orange. And you figure the air temperature when it's 12.6 degree. With this, convective heat transport coefficient, that's um, mild, right? If it's not windy, it doesn't accelerate the convective heat transport coefficient. Then if the air temperature dropped below that, below 12 degree, for example, then your orange is going to lose more heat than it receives from the air then the temperature will keep dropping, and you're going to end up with frozen orange. For, on the other hand, if somehow it becomes windy, the air circulation accelerates. As we know from our force convective uh, heat transport calculation, then the convective heat transport becomes more efficient or effective. The air temperature will only drops to about six degree. Only when the te temperature drops below six degree, then you're going to end up with frozen orange. So this calculation has some more practical meaning to guide if you're an orange farmer. Uh, for that matter, it, it has practical meaning for other type of fruit production as well. Uh, so here, here you have it. So we look at the balance between heat received by the fruit through heat transport by convective heat transport versus heat loss due to radiation into the ambient environment. Certainly this is very sensitive to the uh, sky temperature. And so if the sky temperature is not that low, then uh, you won't lose as much heat.